Hi, this is Bob Brooks, bringing you all the action of the World Professional Trampoline Championships. The meet was co-sponsored by the Illinois Gymnastic Coaches Association and the World Professional Trampoline Association. A capacity crowd was on hand, and among the many dignitaries is a man whose name is synonymous with rebound tumbling, Mr. George Nissen, whose company cooperated with the arrangements for the evening. In addition to the trampoline competition, Doris Fuchs Browse is on hand to provide her world-famous routine on the uneven parallel bars. Along with the other awards, prize money will be presented to the top four contenders in the rebound tumbling competition. Fourteen officials from all over the world will handle the judging for the meet. Mr. Ted Blake of London, England was elected as head judge. His vote indicates the opinion of all the judges for a specific match. The warm-up time is drawing to a close and the men are ready for the competition. One of the first performers is Fred Sanders of Tucson, Arizona. The former national junior AAU champion and Big Ten champion presented the most difficult routine of the evening with an axial rotation rating of 164.2. Unlike the grading point system used in amateur contests, the professional championships feature match competition in the form of a double elimination tournament. <laughs> Sanders competes against Gary Irwin of Ann Arbor, Michigan. This man has won a total of 10 major championships in a five-year period of competition. Each competitor performs an optional routine against only one man. The judges then vote for either the first or the second man on the basis of the overall routine. Ed Cole of Evanston, Illinois. He opens with a triple twist into a double back, a very difficult combination. Ed won his first trampoline championship in 1957, and he is a former world professional diving champion. His twisting back one and a half is similar to a diving move. <laughs> Cole's stunts are pitted against George Harry of Farmington, Massachusetts. Harry is defending his world professional crown. He works at extreme heights with nearly perfect technique. A very nice performance. The judge's decision to Harry. Ronnie Munn of Amarillo, Texas. As was the case in Fred Sanders' routine, Munn's combination of multiple twists and somersaults gives him an axial rotation rating of 156.8. In the knockout system, the first loss of a match drops the man into the loser's bracket. However, he will still compete against the winner's bracket. This means that one poor execution will not eliminate him from competition. <laughs> Brent Williams of Carbondale, Illinois, is a star of the 1966 Southern Illinois team, which won the NCAA Gymnastic Championships. Nice performances from both men with the judges giving the match to Ronnie Munn. Gary Irwin returns as the competition continues in the winner's bracket. Gary's first major championship was the Junior National AAU Tournament in 1961. Since that time, he has won the Midwest Open four times from 1961 through 64, was the Big Ten co-champion in 1964 and champion in 1965 won the NCAA championships in 1963 and 64, world amateur runner-up in 64, and champion in 1965. An almost unbelievable record 
for only five years of active competition. Irwin's stunts must be near perfect. He's matched against defending champion George Harry. Harry opens with a triple back and follows with a branny out flippus. Harry is increasing his difficulty rating. He's just added a full twist to his one and three quarters back somersault into a double Cody finish. Tremendous execution of some extremely difficult moves. A tough one for the judges, and Irwin is a close winner. John Hamilton earlier had defeated Pat Winkle, the former British amateur champion from London, England. John performs well from back landings, and here he handles a triple twist inside his routine without losing any control. Ron Munn is a national AAU champion of 1956 and 1959, the Pan American Games champion of 1959, Midwest Open champion in 1959, and was a member of the United States team to tour Africa in 1960, and was runner-up in the national space ball doubles in 1965. Although Hamilton's execution was near perfect, the judges picked Munn on a more intricate routine, and Ronnie seems to be relieved. Picking up the competition with the losers section, Brent Williams performs. Williams is increasing his difficulty rating. He adds a double back somersault in a pike position and loses a bit of control. An overall nice performance. Now it's John Hamilton's turn. His championships include the Southwest AAU meet of 1959, 60, and 61, Big Ten co-champion in 1964, and NCAA runner-up in 1964. Both men had control problems with their routines, and the judges elect to advance Hamilton to the next round. At the midpoint of the activities of the evening, Doris Fuchs Browse presents her performance on the new style System Reuter Uneven Parallel Bars. These bars, which are guide to the floor, are now officially specified by the Federation of International Gymnasts. A former 1964 United States Olympic team member, Doris demonstrates a wide variety of movements which are unique on the bars. When Doris performed at the 1966 World Championships in Dortmund, Germany, the judges scored her near-perfect routine from 9.6 to 9.9. .9. However, the crowd felt that her score was not high enough, and they booed and stomped their feet for 58 minutes. 
Doris's performance deserves an encore, and here she is again with her mastery on the uneven parallels. Doris's mount from a back uprise to a free hip circle illustrates a trend that she has established. Her pike straddle front somersault from low bar to high bar was one of the factors which motivated the crowd in Dortmund. Her ability to transfer from bar to bar and to execute fully extended free-swinging movements are demonstrated just ahead of her dismount. <laughs> Another intermission highlight for the crowd was a closely fought space ball match between the United States and Great Britain. The United States team on the right consists of John Stillians and Ed Cole. The British duo features Pat Winkle and Wally DeWoody. The game combines the fun of volleyball, basketball, and trampolining. The object of the game is simple. A point is scored when the opponent loses control and drops the ball, but the execution requires quickness and agility. A nice save by DeWoody. DeWoody loses control and it's a point for the United States. Another point for the U.S. Nice shot as Great Britain scores. The United States team edged out the British team by the score of 7-5. to five. Returning to the competition, the field has been narrowed to four men. John Hamilton, performing in the loser's bracket, realizes that if he loses, he must settle for fourth place. He's working higher with better form and control. John's fancy dismount indicates that he's pleased with his performance. And now it's George Harry's chance to stay in the running. After an earlier defeat by Gary Irwin, George plays it cautious and eliminates his opening triple. He's concentrating on form and control. The judge's decision to George Harry. Ronnie Munn, who has just suffered his first defeat, can afford no more losses as he confronts last year's champion, George Harry. He begins his routine with a triple back, which ends up costing him some control. Including it, however, will put the pressure on Harry. The winner of this semi-final match will be pitted against Irwin in the finals. <laughs> Harry must not be looking ahead to the finals. Munn has just turned in a fine routine. George not only meets the challenge of Munn's triple, but he maintains height and control. The loser of this match must settle for third place in the meet.
Perry moves on to the finals. You can feel a tremendous amount of tension as Irwin and Harry are ready for the match they've been waiting for all evening. I'll ask Gary Irwin to tell us what was running through his mind at that time and to describe some of this great routine. Well, Bob, that's uh, one thing I'd like to ask you about. I was under the impression that I was coming here to win a Mustang. I'm only going for a grand here. Uh, tell us a little bit about the routine here, uh, uh, Gary. Uh, uh, describe that for us, if you would. Uh, well, I wasn't uh, really fired up a hell of a lot. I start out with a couple of flips right at the start there, and uh, there I'm. Did you get into a little bit of trouble there on that uh, on that one section? Well, there, no, it? not really. I was just uh, I just moved myself back there. You know how it is, Gary. That was a beautiful routine. However, it needs to be near perfect if Gary's going to dethrone the defending champion. So now let's talk to the opponent, George Harry, and have him tell us his thoughts and describe his routine. Well, I knew I had that big smile. And All I needed to do was throw a triple back at him. I did a heck of a routine. But when I finished up and I looked over there, and they brought in as a head judge and those gangsters from Chicago sitting over there shaking their heads no and putting their thumbs down, I knew I had to meet. Uh, yeah, well, that's, uh, that's uh, certainly uh, 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 nice to know that. Uh, what about your routine? Could you describe just a little bit for us uh, here, uh, uh, George? Yeah, there went a Framus, and here's a Malaprop, and this is a Freebus. You're a great champion, and that was a tremendous performance. <laughs> Undoubtedly the closest match for the judges all evening. All eyes are on Ted Blake's relaying the judge's decision. It's Irwin. <laughs> Gary Irwin of Ann Arbor, Michigan, is the new world professional trampoline champion on a very close decision. Here's what they've been waiting for. Presenting the dividend for their evening's competition is Bob Bevenauer of the Nissan Company. The fourth place winner, John Hamilton, receives his check. Ronnie Munn, the third place winner. Second place winner, George Harry, receives his prize. And the top money is awarded to the world champion, Gary Irwin. George Nissen adds his congratulations. These four men have won a total of 34 trampolining championships in the last few years. A good share of the capacity crowd kept the athletes on the floor signing autographs and receiving congratulations for 45 minutes after the meet was over. The talent and spirit of these athletes has made this a classic event in the annals of rebound tumbling. Yes, the World Professional Trampoline Championship is truly a tournament of champions. <laughs>